Hello, my name is Porter and I am a writing specialist here with Daytona State College. Uh, today's video is going to be a conversion from MLA 8th edition to APA 7th edition. Um, so as you can see here, I have a paper uh, in the MLA 8th edition um, and this is what we will be converting. I am using the Microsoft Office 365 application, which is what you can get when you download Microsoft Office through your Daytona State account. You might also be using the in-browser Microsoft Word application, which will look a little bit different, but the concepts and tools applied will be roughly the same. Now before we begin, I want to point out some of the similarities between MLA 8th edition and APA 7th edition. Now the first similarity between them is the fact that both of them utilize one inch margins. So if you go to layout and then over here to margins, you'll be able to check to see what the margins are. Uh, one inch margin should be a standard option for any Microsoft Office application that you're using. However, if it is not, so as you can see here, mine for some reason is not, you can always go to custom margins, click on that, and put in one inch margins on your own. That's one with the quotation mark after it to denote inch. Press OK, um, and that will ensure that you are in the guidelines for both APA 7th edition and MLA 8th edition. Now, the next thing that's similar between the two, if you want to go back to the home page, is the fact that Times New Roman 12 point font is the standard font and size for your text. So, to make sure that the entire thing is Fitting your Times New Roman 12 point font, you're going to highlight the whole thing. Come up here, select Times New Roman. If you don't have it in there, you can always type it in. And then 12 point font. Another thing that's similar between the two is the fact that on the Works Cited page, which in APA is called the Reference page, you're going to want to organize your citations alphabetically by last name. You are also going to want to make sure that they are using a hanging indent. If you don't know what a hanging indent is, it's when the words above in the first sentence overshoot the second line. So in a regular paragraph, this is a regular indent where the first line is a bit shorter than the rest. It is the opposite for a hanging indent. If you don't know how to do a hanging indent, what you would do is you would select all the text that you need to apply the hanging indent to, and then you're going to go up here to where it says paragraph, and you're going to hit this box uh, with the little arrow on it, it's paragraph settings. You're going to go over here to special and select hanging. Mine are already indented to the hanging indent, so I'm not going to press OK, but you would in your papers. So those are the major similarities between MLA and APA. Uh, and this is where we kind of dig into the differences. Um, so one of the differences is in APA 7th edition, you actually don't need your last name attached to your page number. So you can just delete that. Um, your APA paper should just have the page number up at the top corner. It should be on every page, just like just like MLA. All right, if you don't know how to insert a page number, what you would do is you would go into insert. And then over here, there's the option to insert a page number. You're going to click it, top of page, plain number three, and that will insert a page number at the top of every page that correlates to what number the page is. Um, another big, big difference between APA 7th edition and MLA 8th edition is the fact that APA utilizes a title page. What that means is all of this information about who wrote the paper and what class it's for and the title is going to be on a separate page from the content of the paper. So this isn't going to be on the first page. Um, and a lot of the title page does utilize the same information that the uh, main heading 
of MLA 8th edition papers use. So we're going to still include the title itself, right? We're still going to include our name, our professor's name, the class code, and the date it's due. The biggest thing we're going to add to this is going to be what school we're attending. Um, so to be able to convert this to a APA title page, what we're going to do is first we're going to move the body of our work onto a new page. We're not going to do that by hitting enter a whole bunch of times, although that is an easy way to do it. What we're actually going to do is hit enter once and then we're going to insert. So we're going to be on the insert tab, just like with uh, page numbers. We're going to insert a page break. And what that means is that everything above this page break on this page will not affect what's on the next page. So if we were to just hit enter a bunch of times, right? And then go back up and add things in. It's going to affect how far down the, the body of work goes on the next page. But if we just use a page break insert, what that means is if we add anything up here, it's not going to affect how far the paper goes down on the next page. Now, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll back up and we want to rearrange the title page so that this information is center aligned and underneath the title. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take all of this, we're going to highlight it, we're going to right click and cut, and then we're going to go under the title and we're going to paste it. So however way you paste it, what you're going to want to do afterwards is make sure that it is center aligned. The title page for an APA paper is always going to be center aligned. So you're going to select it and then you're going to go to the home tab. And you're going to go over here to where you see these lines. You're going to select the middle one. So that's center alignment. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go before your title and you're going to hit enter about four or five times until it's nearly but not necessarily completely centered. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of where we need to make sure we're using a page break instead of just hitting enter to put the text on the next page because this way, when we hit enter, it doesn't affect what's down here. Now we're going to go back up. And again, the order of the title page is actually your title itself, the name of the author, so in this case your name, and then after your name, you're going to insert your school. So in this instance, it would be Daytona State College. After your school, you're actually going to use your class code. So we're going to switch your professor's name with the class code by cutting it and pasting it above her name. Um, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that the professor's name is here. Right. And then finally, you're going to include the date that the paper is due. So make sure that it's not the date that you write it, but the date that it's due. All right, once you have all of these things, you're going to go up here to the title of the paper. You're going to bold it. And that way you have all of the information you need to create the title page. And it should look about like this. So almost centered about five enters down. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select this title, right? And we're going to copy it. So we're not cutting it this time. We're just copying it. Copy. Then we're going to go down and we're going to insert the title again. Now this is uh, unlike MLA, of course, uh, MLA does not utilize the title more than once, but APA does. We're going to keep the bolding as well. Um, delete any spaces that might generate and right under the second title on the second page as you can see up here that's where your paper will start 
So this is where the beginning of your body of text should be. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move all the way down to your works cited page, which should be your references page in APA. So we're going to change works cited to references. Just like our title, we're going to make sure references is centered. And then we're going to move on to converting our references, which will be in part two of this short video series. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will be moving on to showing you the differences between APA and MLA citations in common sources for students in the next video. Thank you very much.